So last class, we learned about uh, the introduction to the airline uh, sector. We learned about the airline industry, like how the airline industry developed over the years. And of course, you know, like who, who was the one who invented the aircraft that is Wright Brothers, okay? And it's like, you know, you all know being, of course, not just being part of uh, airlines management student, but also just as general knowledge, you, you, we all know that airline, uh, the aircraft was invented or the airplane was in, invented by the Wright brothers. Now, later on, of course, the airline industry evolved over the years. And today what we have is, you know, you know, we are have reached the stage of technological advancement and, um, you know, we have the best airlines, we have uh, different airline models, we have international level, domestic level, as well as regional level, and we are operating, uh, I mean, the airlines are operating and connecting a maximum, uh, you know, cities in the world and maximum countries, and so on. Well, so first we learned about last class about the history of airline industry again that is how it is it has evolved over the years then we spoke about the introduction and certain uh, you know management aspects and how management and airlines are connected of course it is connected so we try to integrate the co certain concepts of management with airlines management then we learned about uh, you know the, the the management structure in the airline industry and uh, just I touched upon that aspect a little bit and today we'll go to it in detail. Uh, I said that it is divided into the top management, the middle level management and the, the, the lower level management. So today we are going to study about the models of airline uh, industry uh, the, the, uh, the, or the models of airlines and the types of airlines that are operational today in the world. And also we are going to learn about, um, you know, a little bit of airlines operations. Let's go to our slides. Just wait a moment, please. Okay, I'm so sorry we got disconnected. I think we have connectivity issues. Anyway, we are we have resumed now. Um, let me just share the slide with you. Just a moment, please. Okay. So uh, now we will continue with this airline and airport relationship. So in this slide, we're going to learn about airport and airline relationship. We'll see what is the nexus between the airport and airline relationship. And also we're going to study about the airline company structure. We did a little part of it in chapter two that we discussed during the last class. That is during the last class, we finished chapter one and chapter two. And during this lecture, I endeavored to complete chapter three and chapter four because they are short chapters. So um, airline organizational structure here, I just made a small list that you can just go through later. But however, it just says that uh, the top level management of, uh, of an airline company commonly referred to as a C-level positions, it comprises of, um, you know, the shareholders or the owners, the directors, the board members, the chief executive officer, the chief officers, managing directors, departmental heads, such as finance head, legal head, or general counsel, 
or even the legal director, or also may be called as a chief legal officer, and sometimes the general manager legal, it depends upon like whatever uh, designation any aviation company decides to give, or any airlines company, we're talking about airlines. And last class, we discussed about the difference between aviation and airlines. Aviation is a comprehensive term. Airlines is part of aviation because many people get confused and use it as a synonymous term. It is not synonymous, but airlines is part of the aviation sector. So normally, depending upon how huge the airlines is and what is their organization structure, likewise, the structure varies. They might prefer to call um, you know, the head of legal department as a legal head or they might prefer to call the person as you know general counsel or they may designate the person as legal director or sometimes even the chief legal officer and sometimes general manager legal or even senior legal manager it depends depending upon the practice of the company and then apart from that of course they, uh, they might have specialists human resources head and so on so basically the top management of the company commonly uh, they are referred commonly to as c level positions Next is we have the mid-level positions and they are commonly categorized as B plus employees, B plus or even B employees. And they comprise of, you know, managers of various departments. They may be professionals. They may be designated as managers. They may be designated as, you know, uh, sometimes as uh, certain departmental heads. So at the departmental level, so departmental heads or, you know, assistant managers, depending upon the practice and the organizational pattern uh, developed by the particular company, the airline company. It also comprises of company executives, uh, professional executives, and so on. Now, the other staff members. So at the third rung, we would have the other staff members, such as the administrative staff, secretaries, public relations officers, pilots, co-pilots, aviation instructors, flight dispatchers, then operation staff who coordinate with pilots and crew in flight to be assured of flight safety or meteorologists and so on. Next, we have at the fourth level, the ground staff. The ground staff, of course, as you know, comprises of ticketing staff, security personnel, passenger service agent, airport station attendants, flight attendants, avionic and technicians, and so on, and the alike. And some other staff, of course, they include baggage handlers, ground technicians, and so on. So in brief, this is what the organizational structure looks like. Um, if you can see here, the C-level positions, um, it comprises of the owner of the airline company reiterating. It can comprise of the chair of the board, that is the chairman. The board members, presidents, vice president, partners, CEO, CFO, COO, CLO, then marketing head, accounts head, sales head, or whatever general manager sales, whatever designation they might give the person, then human resources director or other positions. And then again, you have the other positions such as the flight attendants, uh, you know, airline administrative staff the secretaries, PR specialists, uh, you know, data entry workers at the lowest level, then communication managers, depends, operations agent, avionics technicians, regional sales manager, in case um, it is at, you know, it can be at the other level, at the regional level, then flight dispatchers, ground airport station, uh, attendants, aviation meteorologists, passenger service agents, sales representatives, airline ticket agents, pilots and co-pilots and so on. So basically, uh, you know, the airline company has, you know, these designated employees who are working for them. Again, designation, the name of the designation may vary. But however, like we discussed during the last class, it is divided into the top level, medium level and the lower level management. Apart from that, you have the other staff, the ground staff and some other staff. Next is what is the relationship between airports and airlines? What is the nexus? That is a relationship. The relationship between airlines and airports is an enormously independent one for mutual benefit. And thus we can refer to a symbiotic relationship. We call the relationship between airlines and airports as a symbiotic relationship because each of these, these two, uh, you know, the, these two, um, you know, organization, in fact, the organization, the independent organizations in, in, their, in themselves, like airlines and airports. So 
they are interdependent upon one another and they are therefore therefore we prefer to call uh, them as having a symbiotic relationship because each of them exists for mutual benefit of one another though the entities are two separate entities they cannot thrive without each other that means they cannot survive without each other see if there are airports and there are no airlines of what use is an airport without airlines or what use is uh, airlines without airports like how where would they you know you know fly which would be the you know the port for them which would be the aerodrome i mean so therefore they cannot thrive without each other they cannot survive they're interdependent so thus we can call it as a complex and synergistic relationship therefore the relationship between airlines and airport we say is symbiotic synergistic and complex in nature however the interaction and the relationship between the two entities vary from one country to another i'd like to repeat this the interaction and the relationship between the two entities vary from one country to another now the nexus of the relationship between the airlines and the airports are primarily reflected in the contract that is drawn between the two entities such an agreement may be called as an airport use agreement or airport facility memorandum of understanding or by any other title however predominantly enumerating the clauses that legally bind the two entities with respect to the usage of the airport so therefore again i would like to reiterate that the relationship or the connection between airlines and airports can be primarily seen by a, by a contract that is drawn between them you can see it through a contract that is drawn between them they normally have a contract between them called as airport use agreement or they may also call it agreement as airport facility memorandum of understanding or what any other title but predominantly it enumerates the clauses that legally bind the airport as well as the airlines that is the two entities with respect to the use of the airport or the usage of the airport now clauses that clearly or lucidly determine the duties obligations rights and privileges under the law of each party the payments to be made so such are the clauses so what are the clauses there clauses that clearly explain about the duties the obligation the rights and privileges under the law of each party the payments to be made or received the operation the dispute clause jurisdiction clause maintenance clause or there may be even separate maintenance contract for that purpose or adherence to the laws such as labor laws uh, environmental laws airport regulation and so on so these are some of the clauses that are you know incorporated in an airport use agreement then apart from that the airlines obviously will have to enter into several other agreements with different airports along the routes it operates so of course airlines for example you say emirates airlines example so it operates uh, you know at a diff uh, you know for different routes for example it operates abu dhabi to uh, say uh, bangkok or abu dhabi to china or abu dhabi to whatever country to mumbai india or different different places so depending upon uh, the the routes it covers so it has it has to you know uh, contract with you know different airports so thereby it has to enter into several agreements with different airports along the routes it operates so in case of busy routes or where the airline has frequent flights the contract will have to be drafted you know encompassing the terms of the agreement between each airport and aerodrome depending upon the distinct features or that you know those features that make them different such as the level of operations whether large scale operation or, or as a hub operation or small scale operation um, as a peripheral operation that each one might have so depending upon the level of operation at times the airlines may not have any operation at a particular airport but may only possess um you know office space sometimes it does happen so additional agreements may include lease agreements uh bought agreement that is build operate transfer 
that is wherein what is a bot agreement that is there is an investor and he agrees to build operate and then after successful operation and control for a specified duration he may then transfer it to the government who you know who actually owns this particular airport whoever is or whoever is the owner of the airport it depends on bot so bot agreements so additional agreements may include lease agreements or even bot agreements uh further airport governance and airlines just before i go further in case we get disconnected please join back okay okay now airport governance and airlines now we all know that airlines play a pivotal role in airport governance especially major airlines now in the case of major decisions that involves capex what is capex capital expenditure so any major decisions that involve capital expenditure expenditure decisions so major airlines participate in the decision making process with the airport so we are talking about the airports here how airlines and airports they you know integrate with one another and how they what is the relationship between them and what are those decisions that sometimes major airlines may intervene in terms of the airport sometimes in case in includes capex decision that is capital expenditure decision major airlines are allowed to participate in the decision making process with the airport so this may be governed by a clause called the mii clause which means majority in interest clause that may find its place in the aviation user agreement normally airlines base their commit their committees at different airports they have committees at different airports and these committee members represent the airline at each airport and participate in the decision making process or even participate in any important meetings that may be scheduled by the airport authorities that necessitates the participation of airlines sometimes there may be even a conflict that may spring up between the two entities that is the airlines as or and um, you know the airport with respect to the apportionment of funds towards the building of maintenance or airport structure and that is where again the committees that are stationed at these airports may intervene and are asked to participate in resolving those differences next what about aeronautical charges there are aeronautical charges that are you know imposed and fees are charged or levied by the airport upon the airline aligned with the aviation policy so it is part of the aviation policies normal policy regulation that there should be aeronautical charges that are levied upon airlines and these charges that are levied for are like are levied for landing in a particular airport based on weight and of course even passengers the number of passengers that they carry so such fees that is aeronautical charges they aid or they help in covering the operational costs and investing in airport infrastructure in the best interest of serving airlines and air passengers now aeronautical passenger charges are levied based on each passenger that exit the terminal that is per departing passenger so how it is calculated yeah so this apc or aeronautical passenger charges are levied based on each passenger that exit the terminal that is per departing passenger from that particular terminal but this may vary from country to country for example paris under the schengen scheme may have the charges based on domestic uh you know based on domestic or schengen european union or schengen non european union category of passengers it depends they have categorized uh, the schengen scheme and then um under that they decide upon the charges or they have the bra they have bracketed the charges uh, depending upon this classification of domestic Sch domestic or schengen european union or schengen non european union category of passengers now some airports charge a lower fee in case of transfer or en route passengers for example amsterdam you take or even toronto or even australia etc next is security charges airport security services may be provided by either of the entities personnel that is either the airport or airlines or in the alternative third party security services may be contracted like with services agency or maybe government or you know private agencies such a responsibility and cost may be shared by both entities airlines and airports in this sector so for example you have this black cat or whatever there are different 
type of security agencies that are available. So the airports might contract the services of these security agents. Now, there is something called as non-aeronautical charges. Now, Law Insider defines non-aeronautical charges as charges levied by an airport in consideration for the various commercial arrangements it makes about, you know, granting of concessions or rentals or leasing of premises and land or free zone operation, or even though such arrangements may apply to activities which may themselves be considered to be of an aeronautical character. Next is ground handling costs. Now, ground handling services may be provided by either the airport operator or a government agency. Depending upon any specific agreement to that extent now. So in the alternative, it may be handled by the airline that is self-handling. It handles on its own by or by even any other attached airline or by contracting the services of a specialized ground operator. Next is airport regulations. All airports are subject to certain regulations, be they federal or even regulations promulgated by a regional regulatory authority, such as customs regulation, operational regulations, etc. So apart from the operational aspects, even the infrastructural development projects must comply with certain regulations, such as environmental regulations, etc., which may be reflected in infrastructure contracts project contracts, service level agreements, and likewise. So this is the nexus between airports and airlines. And these are some kind of agreements that they may have be between each other and how they you know, distribute the costs between them, how they distribute the different, uh, uh, you know, uh, charges, different charges that are levied and so on. Like aeronaut there's a broad bifurcation as aeronautical charges and non-aeronautical charges. Example of non-aeronautical charges, of course, you know, security uh, costs or ground handling costs, airport regulation, uh, you know, to comply with it and so on. Okay, costs are different. And again, is um, airport regulations needs to be followed. So this is it about when a question comes on the relationship between airport and airline nexus, you're expected to write this. And of course, you're expected to do additional reference. Now let's move on to chapter four.